Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about how to solve a monohybrid cross problem dealing with heredity and determining the genetic likelihood of what two parents might have as their offspring. As we learned with meiosis, there's all sorts of genetic variation that we would get in any particular um, occurrence of reading. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how we can guess what we're more likely to have depending on what our parents are. This is called a heredity problem or a monohybrid, mono meaning one, um, cross problem, a monohybrid cross problem. Um, the way I solve it is this. The first thing I do is I read the problem and I try to underline some of the important information that I find in there. So if you'll read along with me. In cats, long hair is a dominant trait over short hair. So the first sentence tells me right away what we're going to be dealing with today is whether or not a cat has long hair or short hair. Next to long hair, we find a capital H. The capital tells me that something that this particular allele is dominant over the short hair trait with the, with the lowercase h. We'll talk about dominant recessive in just a second. Secondly, as I continue to read, if I bred a heterozygous long-haired cat with a homozygous short-haired cat, what length of hair would their like offspring most likely have? So, what I see in this problem are a few things. First, I find that long hair is dominant over short hair. Secondly, I find that my first parent is heterozygous long-haired, and my second parent is homozygous short-haired. Now those words might be new to you, so just in case they are, let's review what they mean. Homozygous means that you would have the same alleles for a trait. For example, two dominant alleles are shown with two capital letters, or for two recessive alleles, you might show that with two lowercase letters. You can see a few examples here. There's also the possibility of being heterozygous. When you're heterozygous, it means that you have two different alleles for a particular trait. For example, a dominant capital R and a recessive lowercase r, or T or C. Dominant alleles cover up recessive alleles so that they don't show up. Dominant alleles are shown with capital letters. Recessive alleles are the ones that are covered up by the dominant allele and are shown with lowercase letters. When we look back at the problem, the first thing that we want to do is identify the parents. In order to identify the parents, we're going to use the information that we find from the problem to list what we call the genotypes of the parents. Genotypes use letters to describe an organism's genetic makeup. For example, capital D lowercase e, we know would be heterozygous since it has different alleles. Capital R, capital R would be homozygous dominant because it's the same alleles, both dominant. Lowercase t, lowercase t would be homozygous recessive. Same alleles, both recessive. Phenotype describes what an organism looks like using words. And we'll talk about those in just a minute. Back to the problem. Our first parent is said to be a heterozygous long-haired cat. Heterozygous tells us that we have both one dominant and one recessive allele. So the first thing I would encourage you to do is to write down that parent. I use a capital H and a lowercase h to represent that that parent is heterozygous. I use a little w with an underlined symbol, which is one that I like to use, I don't know that anyone else uses it, to represent the second parent that it's being bred with. Our second parent is a homozygous short-haired cat. Homozygous means same, and I know that short is used with a lowercase h. So a homozygous short-haired cat would have two of the recessive alleles and thus have short hair. Step one, I have identified the parents and I'm ready to move on to the second step. The second step very often has us doing uh, the Punnett square. Um, and the Punnett square is, is kind of a big tool that we use to really help us determine these things. And sometimes people will call these Punnett square problems. In order to set up the Punnett square, we would first draw, you guessed it, a square. Afterwards, we would kind of make a window. So as making four boxes. They don't have to be perfectly even, as you can see mine aren't. 
After this, we have to put the parents on either side of the square. Now, it doesn't really matter which side, either the top or the left side, which parent goes on which side. I've had some teachers tell me to do it one way versus another, but it doesn't really affect the results, so I'm not too worried about how you do it. But what we'll do, we'll take our first parent, who has a capital H and a lowercase h, is heterozygous, and I'll put a capital H above one box, and then a lowercase h from here to the second box. Then for my second parent, I'll place the first letter to the left and the second letter below it to the left. I've now set up my square and it's time to fill it in. What I will do is drag the letter down and the letter across. So I bring my capital H down and fill the box, then my lowercase across. My capital down, my lowercase across. Now the big thing to remember is that capital letters always have to go first. Always have to go first. We don't want you to confuse capital H, lowercase h with lowercase h, capital H. And we'll talk more about that when we get to our next stuff. Then we're going to pull across and down or down and across because they're both lowercase. It doesn't really matter. I end up with two lowercase h's in this box, two lowercase h's in this box. We've now completed our our Punnett square and are ready to move on to step three. Step three, we're going to list our genotypes and determine their percentage likelihoods. So sometimes I'll write in genotype. I might just write G, doesn't really matter. To do this, I'm literally going to look at the boxes we've created above and just list them. So for example, one possible genotype from these two parents would be again heterozygous, capital H, lowercase h. I take it from this box, I like to cross this box out and make a tick mark. I then go to my next box, I like to work across. I find a different genotype, we can see that this genotype and this genotype are different. So I cross off the box, I make a tick mark. I come to my next box. I already have this genotype, so I don't have to rewrite it. I can simply cross it off and make a tick mark. And then lastly, our final box, again, I already have it. Cross it off, make a tick mark. I then like to calculate their percentages as opposed to just leaving them as tick marks. I have two possibilities out of the four total boxes. Two out of four we know is 50%. Same for here, 50%, two out of four boxes. And this tells me that when these two parents breed, I have a 50% likelihood of getting a parent with this genotype and a 50% likelihood of a parent with this genotype. Now I'm ready for step four. In step four, I'm gonna calculate the possible phenotypes. And as you remember from before, phenotypes use words to describe an organism's appearance due to its genetic makeup. Because capital H, lowercase h, doesn't really tell me what it looks like, phenotypes are going to use words that everyone can understand. So I go to my genotypes and I look at my very first one, a capital H, a lowercase h. I know that because it has a dominant allele, I know that this would therefore be long-haired, because this long-haired allele is going to cover up the short-haired allele. So I'm going to write in long hair which comes from this, so I make a little check mark here, and I know that it gets one, two tick marks from the two here. My second genotype, two lowercase, would give me a short haired cat, also two tick marks. We know that each of the tick marks, two out of four, would give me 50%. And I can now say that with these two parents, I would have a 50% likelihood of having a long-haired cat and a 50% likelihood of having a short-haired cat. 